welcome back to the channel. This will be episode three of the collection series that we've been doing. I think so far it's worked out pretty good and had a lot of fun you know, digging through uh, what I have here in the collection, pulling out an artist that I either have the entire discography on CD or just quite a bit of that music, uh, taking a look at you know, the artwork in the CD and what some of my favorite songs on those are. I have successfully done a companion radio show highlighting the music on these albums that we're talking about here. Won't go into it a whole lot, but definitely make sure you're checking those out on the YouTube channel here. And then the companion radio shows uh, rebroadcast on radiosunnyside.org uh, occasionally 101.5 here locally in Flagstaff and otherwise I have gotten those up on the YouTube channel as well so you can listen to. I do also have the playlist that I put together for these shows on my Spotify. You can find it there, Get You One Radio. Make sure you're following me on Instagram as well. It's Get You One underscore radio. Yeah, but we're going to jump right into it again. This will be episode three. Today is the sword if you're familiar with the sword at all then you will already know that it's going to be a, a really good radio show it should be lots of fun if you're unfamiliar with the sword uh it's you know some hard rock like they almost call it stoner rock something like that but a lot of fun there's a ton of information online about the history of the sword and kind of how the progression from like 2006 until 2022 i believe was when they finally called it quits to move on to something else or whatever the case was there but a lot of uh really cool like fantasy influenced hard rock seen them in concert quite a few times any chance that i got really when they would come around and put on a really great live show i was happy to have gotten to the last show that they did in phoenix a couple of years ago we didn't know it was going to be the last show that we'd see them at the time but uh, through a Facebook post and whatever their social media was and they wrote like a whole thing about how uh, they were putting it to bed really and moving on to other projects but in that span of you know the years that they were putting out albums put out a lot of great music and makes for a, a really good time and should be a great radio show so stick around uh we're gonna dig into my collection of the sword all right collection series uh talking about the sword uh pulled off the different sword albums that i have here from the list and decided to pull out a little bit of the merchandise i picked up over the years too so we'll start that off with got a koozie always like to get me a koozie with the tie-dye and then it says the sword in there and LaCroix of course so yeah always like uh, when bands have uh, koozies and stuff always pick that up makes for carrying your drink around the show that much more enjoyable and then I did mention you know a lot of their music is uh, fantasy based so this one's kind of cool this t-shirt I probably didn't get the size I normally would but it was I think uh, whatever year I saw them play it was kind of towards the end of their tour and I got what they, whatever they had and so I thought that was really cool though with like this guy this Viking looking guy with his sword and his his horse all ready to go and the sword but we're gonna start off here the first album um, and it's actually their first release is Age of Winters Age of Winters kind of a cool cover there and that's the back kind of see it with the girl on there and i like this it's got the the white plastic look kind of sweet i'm pretty certain that this is uh this is you know the official first release of this album got a lot of great tunes on here pretty much all the way from beginning to end uh celestial crown freya winter wolves iron swan march of lore uh, towards the end there that's uh, one of my favorites of theirs just an instrumental really hard hitting metal stuff got some pictures going on there cool looking disc with like the different things sweet nice little booklet it's got the lyric sheet going on and then like these little illustrations in there if you're into like the fantasy D and D that type of stuff, this would be right up your alley. I guess the picture of the band, 
So let's see what this says. All songs copyright 2006. It just says like where, where it was recorded, the type of thing. King's music it says, come away, oh human child, to the waters and the wild. With a parry, hand in hand, pour the world's more pool of weeping than you can understand. William Butler Yeats from The Stolen Child, as it says right there. Super awesome. This is your band, and this is the uh, first album that you put out. You'd be pretty happy about that. Um, this is a solid album. Uh, definitely play a couple of tunes off of this one for the radio show. It'd be hitting pretty hard. <laughs> All right, and this, uh, this sword shirt, just the hands coming around the world. Um, this is the one I think I got at the last time I saw them play in Phoenix. And they, had, they always have like a lot of really great merch. I try to get at least one shirt and you know, they can end up getting super expensive buying merchandise, but I do like to buy things directly from a band whenever I see them play live, because that's usually what's you know, getting them by on the road and that type of thing, buying their merch from them. So try to pick up at least something. I thought this was a pretty cool logo. And I think this is uh, kind of the tour logo that they were doing um, in that last tour, 2021, something like that. So, so on the next album, this is the second album that they had released. It's called uh, Gods of the Earth. Gods of the Earth it says 2008. It came out again. You know, you can't go wrong with any of the tracks off of this one. Starting off with the Sundering and the Frost Giant's Daughter. How heavy this axe to take to the black. Great. Uh, Under the Burrows of the Black River and the White Sea. Like sticking with that fantasy realm. I think the first few albums they were you know hardcore fantasy. So super awesome. Just a kind of a black disc. And it's got like this black back plastic, kind of shiny plastic jewel case. Yeah, there's the album cover again. And that's essentially the same thing that's uh, on the back of the disc that's inside of this. This one kind of folds out. It has some credits here about publishing and thank yous and that type of thing. Opens up into the lyric sheet. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. How Heavy This Axe is a highlight on this album for me, for sure. Uh, the Sundering is another uh, instrumental. They have uh, quite a few instrumental tunes that they've done through their catalog, and I think they're always super awesome. For With a rough edit of what I've got for the radio show, I'm definitely gonna be playing some of those because those are some of my favorites. So yeah, Gods of the Earth. All right, and then you can see we got the three-quarter sleeve baseball tee or whatever they call them. Um, you'll see a lot of this style of shirt in the doom metal realm of shows and bands and stuff like that. Uh, I thought this one was cool. This one does. It is a uh, tour shirt. It says uh, Fall Tour 2013. Sometimes I'll get the tour shirts if they have those. Uh, it kind of just remind me of what year it was that I actually saw them. But this one I thought was super cool because it's got, you know, like this crazy hawk looking thing fighting a snake, you know, that's how you're gonna do. And then on to the next album here, this is uh, the third album. It's uh, Warp Riders. And again, it's more like this space fantasy stuff going on there. You know, see the track listing there. It says part one, the archer and the orb. And part two, the android and the sword. But yeah, this one had on that there. And, you know, Trish Brujas, which is, you know, three witches. People really like that one. Arrows in the Dark was a good one for me. Warp Riders, Night City, always really great. And it's just a black disc with some, just some clear writing there. The sword and then red Warp Riders, nothing under the disc. Yeah, this was getting into like that space fantasy stuff. This is an inside cover. Just the outside cover again. Super sweet. Kind of folds out. There's not much going on, just like a spaceship. And this one shows the crew. Uh, they call it the crewmen of the sword. Is how they labeled the guys in the band on here. I guess like over the years, there were a few different drummers from the sword, but it always was uh, John and, and Kyle doing uh, guitars and vocals and stuff like that. They were the 
real main members and and brian i guess played bass but again they kept it pretty simple just some uh black uh, white writing on black background of just the lyric sheet which is cool to see you know like groups keep it keep it real and that's you know kind of the thing uh about the sword it is you know kind of heavier doom metal but pretty clean vocals uh so you can always you know hear what they're what they're singing and uh, makes for good choruses and like you can follow along in the stories of the verses and stuff like that so a lot of fun uh third album warp riders all right so i believe i picked up this three-quarter sleeve at that last show that i'd seen him as well uh, i thought it had a really cool graphic here with this this lady fighter just like stomping on this guy that she just killed now this album uh, i really like this album kind of made a turn and um in their popularity i guess and they started headlining some bigger shows and stuff like this and i was looking it up to see if i could get the actual pronunciation of the name of it it's apocryphon or something like that that's what i'll say i've probably called it various other things over the years just a, a stab at what how you pronounce that yeah and that's the back and this my my copy of it i believe is uh like a limited edition whatever two disc so it just came in like this uh, cardboard digipack style thing um is it double disc no it's a single disc but there were some extra bonus tracks or something like that on it with some live tunes i think it says some stuff around that that's cool and got a nice big booklet here yeah um, I guess this is the first album that the sword put out that didn't have a uh, full instrumental track on it, but that's still good. They had some really cool uh, music videos that came out off of this one. I believe it was, let's see, we'll get to it here. But Veil of Isis started off, yeah, it was Cloak of Feathers. It's a really cool music video. If you're into music videos, you can check that out on their, on their YouTube. Yeah, this book just has like each page just that and then the song and then the lyric sheet for that song. There's Cloak of Feathers. It's pretty thick as it's you know page for every song that's on there. But this is a really good album from beginning to end. It's hard to say like where you'd start with the collection of the sword if you're just wanting to get into them. But uh, this one's solid. Uh, again as they all are so far from beginning to end it's kind of cool pictures whatever those little signs are that's the title track song there ended up being the end of the album which is pretty awesome they make use of like some electronics in there and um always fun to see live I remember seeing them a couple of times and they play that whole place just erupted and go dancing around going crazy then it just has the band members there and then just like their thank yous and that type of thing towards the end but this is 2012 is when it says this one was released sweet all right these next couple here um, i'm just going to do them back to back that they're kind of came out in uh tandem of each other uh high country and low country very similar uh, one's like a daytime and nighttime type of thing. The The songs are almost identical straight across, but the low country is the acoustic versions of these songs, which is like super cool uh, to see how they did that at these, you know, some hard rock uh, tunes, fully electric on high country and then the acoustic versions of those same songs on the low country here uh, there are a couple more on on high country looks like there's 15 tracks on there and then there's 10 tracks on this one and they're pretty close looks like they just cut a couple out of the middle but yeah you can see those mine's definitely a used copy which i got no problem with that finding a used copy and these are just like a plastic or a cardboard with um just a plastic insert here for the this to sit in so not much to really see 
It was a little different. Recorded in 2015, I believe it released 2016. It's a cool picture of the band in the studio there. This drum set is kind of amazing. And, you know, if you're in the studio, you gotta have these rugs. Make you feel like you're Pink Floyd or something. Very similar in, um, yeah, recorded 20, 2015 and released 2016 as well. I think it was just later in the year for the low country. Not much to see there. This did rip coming out. It's kind of a bummer. And they just got like a little bit of art behind. Yeah, but cool songs on here. It starts off with Unicorn Farm, which is kind of a, it is like instrumental, I believe. And so just the two versions of that is super cool. The song High Country on there, Empty Temples is straight away. Uh, that came out really cool. Early Snow, I really like off of the Low Country. Silver Petals, Seriously Mysterious on both of these, uh, the Dream Thieves, Buzzards, like the, these albums like kind of really grew on me. Um, and they're, they're cool to listen to. It's a little bit different of a sound than the previous albums, but super cool nonetheless. All right, and to stick with the kind of chronological theme, I do have this one. It's uh, The Sword Greetings From, and this is a live recording of these tunes here. You can see you got a couple of tunes off of um, high country and you know then some of the classics in here uh trish brujas that type of thing the horn goddess super awesome and just a really cool like spaceship on the cover there open her up that's a live picture of them playing live came out 2017 and recorded live on the fall tour 2016 a lot of bands they'll just record a bunch of shows and edit it together and so it sounds like one one big thing so yeah and this one just kind of comes with a poster which is a cool poster from behind the drum kit and not too much more to see all right then the the last official album this says copyright 2018 is used future and this one uh you know definitely you know keeping that hard rock stoner doom feel to it but there's some extra production in here like some horns and stuff like this on a couple of these tunes and some electronic keys and various things like that um so it's super cool to see how they did that and just this one's just a cardboard with the disc in there and then there's a picture of the band at the time in there a cool looking space age car barely read that but super awesome um nonetheless use future you know the uh title track i uh, really like that one deadly nightshade is cool um and yeah this one it like i said is different than the other ones i kind of moved away from the uh real fantasy realm of stuff and you know just started putting out some you know more straightforward rock i guess but super good nonetheless and i'm gonna play a few tunes off of that one as well on the radio show so make sure you're checking that out all right so that's it for my uh my collection of the sword at least so far there's um i believe like one other uh greatest hits album that got released on cd that i've seen a couple of times when i've gone uh shopping for cds um, it was a little kind of out of the price range of what I wanted to pay at the time, uh, seeing that I do have all the albums and I got all those songs anyway. And then they did come out with like kind of a mini box set, which is, you know, everything really. But yeah, I have them all too. Um, just that many albums. And, you know, from the earliest to the latest there with the live one and kind of in the middle, but super sweet. And uh, make sure you're checking this band out. You know, they're all on your, on your streaming platforms and stuff. There's a lot on their um on their wikipedia page and on their website and stuff like that that you know goes more in depth about you know who the who the players are and like what some of their writing styles and that type of thing is i just kind of wanted to show off the physical disc and you know any of the artwork that we have in there and yeah we're getting prepped for the radio show should should be pretty awesome so make sure you're checking that out on radio sunnyside.org uh 101.5 here locally in flagstaff you know like i said at the top of the show here so follow me on the instagram you know all goes well we'll have the rebroadcast here on the youtube channel as well so excellent <laughs>